Hello and welcome back to Cultural Geography. In this video lecture, I will be highlighting some of the key points in the chapter, but not all of them. Therefore, it's your job to be responsible for the materials covered in the textbook, as you'll be tested on this as well. And today we're going to be talking about some specific aspects of language. So on that note, let's jump in. So the first question we want to look at is kind of what is language and then why is it important? And so language is a system of communication through speech. It's a collection of sounds that a group of people understand to have the same meaning. And it's important because it enables members of groups to communicate. It's a fundamental component of culture and it also acts as a barrier. Other definitions of language include signing and gesturing. For example, expressions such as a head and eye movement convey important meanings. And this is a form of language as well. While there is still some debate whether a particular language influences people's thought process, or it is indeed people's culture that influences the language, there is no doubt that language and culture are closely connected. Which brings us to why language is important. Through language we create and share with others our way of doing things and the way of being in the world, our culture. How a particular culture uses language can reveal important aspects of society and behavior, including how people organize activities, socialize new members, build or resist authority, use literacy tools, worship, argue, and imagine. For anyone, anyone acquiring a new language, and approaching a different culture, one of the first seemingly simple lessons to be learned are greetings, for example. So the number of languages in the world is diminishing at a rapid rate as a result of cultural contact, colonialization, status, and globalization. When a language dies out, there is a significant loss to the world community and the next generation in knowledge and culture, since language is the primary means of cultural maintenance and transmission. So what's a standard language? It's the form of a language used for official government business, education, and mass communication. So English is the language spoken by most people in the United States. So the official language of many states is English, but it is not the federal level, but not at the federal level. And it is, it is the language used in nearly all government functions. So an accent is the way that particular person or group of people sound. It's the way people pronounce words, the uh, musicality of their speech, and so forth. Dialect, on the other hand, describes both a person's accent and the grammatical features of the way that person talks. So to provide an example, you could say that someone from Alabama has a southern accent, meaning that they pronounce words differently than someone from northern United States. However, accent would not refer to a southerner's use of the word y'all. Have you ever heard, uh, have you, you ever watched kind of the cooking show with uh, Paula Dean and how she says y'all? Well, that's a perfect example of her dialect. That would fall under the category of a southern dialect, or when people says he done it, while others say he did it. Both are using different dialects because grammatical differences are involved. Another example is pronouncing creek or crick. I'm from Southern California, I say creek. People up here commonly say crick, different dialects. One of the more common dialect maps out there is this generic name for soft drinks. So I'm from California and we called soft drinks, or all soft drinks, soda. So as a young kid, I went to Pennsylvania in the summer to visit relatives, and everyone there called soft drinks pop. So the first time I heard this, I had no idea what they were talking about. It was the strangest thing because everyone I knew referred to it as soda. So according to this map, about 50 to 80% of people in Ada County refer to soft drinks as pop. I still refer to it as soda, and probably always will. Interesting, Blaine County, about 50 to 80% of the people refer to it as soda. So I wonder if this has anything to do with Californians moving to Sun Valley area and bringing with them their dialect. Maybe. 
So here I'll talk about isogloss. An isogloss is a geographic boundary within which a particular linguistic feature occurs. So however, it is rarely a simple line. So usually there are outliers of usage and boundaries change over time. So here's an isogloss map of carbonated beverages. So Northern California is sharply divided into regions by the general term for a carbonated beverage. Soda is used in the Northeast, including the Mid-Atlantic states, in a large southern or southwestern area. Coke dominates the South and extends much further west than this uh, definition of the South. But pop is geographically the dominant term, extending from Midland to North in Canada and some of the Northeast. So Coca-Cola is located out of Atlanta, and maybe that is why Coke is often referred to in the South. So how is the distribution of language? So the distribution of language results from a combination of interaction and isolation. It's important to know. Every language originates in a particular location and diffuses to other locations through the migration of its speakers. So in general, how do languages become distributed around the world? As we said, languages originate, evolve, and become distributed around the world as a result of a combination of this interaction and isolation. In other words, this is an interplay of migration, spatial interaction among different groups of people speaking different languages, and geographic isolation. So places where it is extremely difficult to get to because of maybe uh, ocean crossings, large mountains, etc., these languages are going to be isolated and probably will change very little over time. To illustrate this, let's look at the English language as an example. So you might have asked yourself, where did the English language originate? Well, the short answer is England, but English was not the original language of England. So how did English come about? So let's take a closer look at this question. So while the British Isles have been inhabited for thousands of years, we knew nothing of their early language until the Celtics, or the Celts, arrived in England around 2000 BC from Europe and spoke Celtic. However, the Celts had little influence on the English language. In discussing the evolution of the English language, we can divide it into three key periods. Don't worry about the dates on this, you should just kind of understand the general concept here. It was the Old English from 450 to 1150, Mid English from 1150 to 1500, and Modern English, which is 1500 to present. So in year 1449, three European tribes invaded England, the Angles, the Jutes, and the Sacks, and they all pushed the Celts to the northern and western Britain, which is now Scotland and Wales. In the map shown here, we can see the migration route of the three invading tribes and the fleeing Celts. The Angles, Jutes, and Sacks spoke a mutual intelligible language. Through the years, these tribes interacted with one another, mixing their different Germanic dialects, which resulted in four new major dialects. So of these dialects, Old English, also referred to as Anglo-Saxon, was the most prominent and became the common language. However, Old English does not sound or look like English today. We would not be able to understand it when spoken or written. Old English was further enriched by Latin and some Greek, which was brought to the British Isles by St. Augustine in uh, 597 AD, a missionary who brought Christianity to the British Isles. So in 1066, the Vikings, or Normans as they were also referred to, as they were commonly referred to, from Normandy, France, conquered the Angles, Jutes, and Sacks. So this invasion began the transition of Old English to Middle English. The Norman French ruling minority dominated the church, government, legal, and education system and established French as the official language of England for the next 300 years. So the upper class spoke French and the lower class continued to speak English. The French introduced words such as judge, jury, 
and evidence, while the English-speaking farmers introduced words such as cow, sheep, and swine. In 1204, King John lost the providence of Normandy to the King of France. This began a process where the Norman nobles of England became increasingly estranged from their French cousins. England became the chief concern of the nobility rather than the, the states in France, and consequently, the nobility, the, no, the, the noble adopted a modern English as their native tongue. By 1500, English had reasserted itself as the official language, but it was more off, more was much more different from the old English due to many of the French words fused with the English. So this mix of the two languages became known as Middle English. So modern English, which was 1500 to present, saw a sudden and distinct change in pronunciation with vowels being pronounced shorter and shorter. The renaissance of this classical learning, which was marked by the rapid advance of the sciences, a renewed interest in the Greek and kind of Roman classics, the rise of this nationalism introduced many new words and phrases to the English language. So William Caxton brought the printing press to England in 1476, which made the printing of books less expensive, which in turn allowed uh, many more people to learn to read. Furthermore, printing standards standardized the English language. Shakespeare, for example, wrote in modern English. The Industrial Revolution in the 1800s in England brought many new words because of this new technology. So the new world, English adopted words such as raccoon and skunk from the Native Americans, Early French explorers introduced words such as prairie and butte to the English vocabulary. And in the 19th century, Germans introduced the words pretzel, hamburger, and delicate sense, for example. So the question is, is English changing? Yes, and so is every other human language. Language is always changing, evolving, and adapting to the needs of its users. This isn't a bad thing. If English hadn't changed since, say, 1950, we wouldn't have words to refer to modern things such as fax machines, cable TV, tweeting, and pop culture via kind of TV and music. For example, Dunzo, meaning over or finished, is from the TV show Laguna Beach, or Dole from Homer Simpson, or the words Jiggy, Dope, and Bling Bling. These words would not be, a, be around if we didn't kind of constantly evolve and change. As long as there's a need for language, users continue to change. So language will change. Change is so slow that from year to year, we hardly notice it. So language has changed for several reasons. First, it changes because the need of the speakers change. New technologies, new products, and new experiences require new words to refer to them clearly and effectively. Consider texting. Originally, it was called text messaging because it allowed one person to send a text rather than a voice message by phone. As that became more common, people began using the shorter form, text, to refer to both the message and the process. As in, I just got a text, or I'll text Jennifer right now. Another reason for changing is that no two people have the exact same language experience. We all know a slightly different set of words and constructions depending on our age, job, educational level, region of the country, and so on. So we pick up new words and phrases from all different people we talk with. And these combine to make something new and unlike any other person's particular way of speaking. At the same time, various groups and societies use language as a way of marking their group identity, showing who is and isn't a member of a group, for example. Many of the changes that occur in language begin with teens and young adults. So as young people interact with their own age group, their language grows to include words, phrases, and constructions that are different from the older generation. Some have a short lifespan. When was the last time you heard groovy? It's probably been a while. Every once in a while I do hear that word groovy and it's like, whoa, that sticks out. And you know, it's kind of probably part of their vocabulary, their language but it's different from most of ours and so we kind of when we hear it, it it stands out as different 
So people tend to think that older forms of language are more elegant, logical, or quote-unquote correct than modern forms. But it's just not true. The fact that language is always changing doesn't mean it's getting worse. It's just becoming different. So on that note, have a great week and see you next video lecture.